ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम साइरम मुजतबा द हेडलाइंस सेंटर जस्टिफाइज द लॉ ग्रांटिंग टेन परसेंट कोटा फॉर इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शन भारतीय जनता पार्टी एंड असम गण परिषद डिसाइड टू कंटेस्ट लोकसभा पोल्स टुगेदर इन असम इलेक्शन कमीशन सेज डिसीजन ऑन होल्डिंग असेंबली इलेक्शन इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर विल बी टेकन सून डीजीसीए ग्राउंड बोइंग सेवन थ्री सेवन मैक्स एट एयरक्राफ्ट विद इमीजिएट इफेक्ट फॉलोइंग एथियोपियन एयरलाइंस बोइंग क्रैश ऑन संडे ब्रिटिश पार्लियामेंट रिजेक्ट ब्रेग्जिट डील फॉर अ सेकेंड टाइम एंड इन क्रिकेट India aimed to clinch the five match series against Australia in a tournament decider ODI in Delhi today. The center has justified its law granting 10% quota for economically weaker section EWS saying it has been brought to promote social equality. In an affidavit filed in the Supreme Court yesterday The center said the constitution amendment was necessitated to benefit the economically weaker sections of the society who were not covered within the existing schemes of reservation. The affidavit was filed in connection with a matter where a batch of petitions have challenged the validity of the constitution amendment. The BJP and Assam Gan Parishad AGP have decided to fight together in the upcoming Lok Sabha polls. The decision was taken in a meeting held in Guwahati yesterday in the presence of senior BJP leader Ram Madhav, AGP president Atul Bora and executive president Keshab Mahant along with convener of the North East Democratic Alliance Himant Biswas Sharma were also present in the meeting. More from our correspondent. After days of speculation the BJP and Assam Gana Parishad decided to make an alliance Bodoland People Front is a third member in the alliance the party has given ticket to social welfare minister Pramila Rani Brahmo at Kokrajhar seat the BJP and Assam Gana Parishad separated due to the differences over the citizenship amendment bill and Assam Gana Parishad ministers had resigned from the ministry but both the parties decided to contest the polls unitedly to defeat the main opposition Congress Manas Pradeep Sharma, AIR News, Guwahati. Ram Madhav also held a meeting with chief ministers of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, and Meghalaya, who are part of the North East Democratic Alliance or NEDA. Issues on post coordination in North East were discussed during the meeting. On the other hand, Chief Electoral Officer Mukesh Sahu held a meeting with various political parties in Guwahati and sought help to ensure smooth conduct of elections. In Kerala the Congress led United Democratic Front and the Bharatiya Janata Party are expected to announce the final list of candidates for Lok Sabha polls by the end of this week as per reports BJP state president PS Sridharan Pillai and former Mizoram governor Kumaram Rajasekharan have been asked to reach New Delhi on Saturday as the Central Election Committee of the party is expected to announce the BJP candidates a report The candidature panel prepared by the election in charge in Kerala has been submitted before the BJP national leadership and the party central election committee will declare the final list of candidates. The ruling left democratic front has already named its candidates. The list includes 14 candidates from Communist Party of India Marxist, four from Communist Party of India and two independents. Congress president Rahul Gandhi will reach Kerala today and will officially launch the election campaigning in the state tomorrow. State chief electoral officer TR Meena has called for a meeting of the representatives of various political parties today regarding the model code of conduct shamila for ar news from tiruvananthapuram election commission has said it will be monitoring regularly and on real time basis the situation in jammu and kashmir and soon take a decision on holding assembly elections in the state the commission said it will also be taking inputs from all necessary quarters in this regard Yesterday the three special observers appointed to assess the situation in Jammu and Kashmir met with the chief election commissioner Sunil Arora and election commissioners Ashok Lavasa and Sushil Chandra in New Delhi here is a report from our correspondent 
द स्पेशल ऑब्जर्वर्स फॉर्मर सीआरपीएफ डी जी अमरजीत सिंह गिल फॉर्मर चीफ इलेक्ट्रल ऑफिसर ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश नूर मोहम्मद एंड फॉर्मर चीफ इलेक्ट्रल ऑफिसर ऑफ राजस्थान विनोद जुत्सी विल विजिट जम्मू एंड कश्मीर सून दे विल मेक ए रियल टाइम असेसमेंट ऑफ द सिचुएशन बाय मीटिंग पोलिटिकल पार्टीज डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड स्टेट अथॉरिटीज एंड अदर स्टेक होल्डर्स इन द स्टेट ड्यूरिंग द मीटिंग ये द सेंट्रल ऑब्जर्वर्स वर ब्रीव अबाउट प्रिपेडनेस ऑफ इलेक्शन द इलेक्शन कमीशन हैड अनाउंस टू होल्ड ओनली लोकसभा पोल्स इन द स्टेट एंड अपॉइंटेड ऑब्जर्वर्स टू एसेस the situation for holding assembly election unpermished ar news delhi at least 10 companies of central paramilitary forces or cpf will arrive in west bengal by 15th of march ahead of the seven phase lok sabha election beginning 11th april addressing a press conference additional chief electoral officer sanjay basu yesterday said 10 companies of border security force will be deployed in certain vulnerable pockets to instill confidence among the voters he said the commission's c vigil app through which voters can register any poll related complaints has started functioning as many as 96000 voter verifiable paper audit trail or vv pat machines will be used during polling in all the 48 lok sabha seats in maharashtra next month an official release said The process of training 6 lakh employees to handle these machines has also started. VVPAT is an independent printer system attached with electronic voting machines or EVMs that allows the voters to verify that their votes are cast as intended. In Telangana, all the four ruling TRS candidates and an MIM candidate have been declared elected during the biennial elections to the state legislature council. Polling was held yesterday followed by counting of votes in the evening. The Congress fielded its candidate but later decided to boycott the election. With this victory, the ruling TRS will now have complete control over the 40 member legislative council as there is no opposition member in the upper house. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation DGCA has decided to ground Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft with immediate effect. The decision comes in the wake of Ethiopian Airlines crash on Sunday in Addis Ababa killing all 157 people aboard. Ministry of Civil Aviation in a series of tweets said that the planes will be grounded till appropriate modifications and safety measures are undertaken to ensure their safe operations. The ministry said that passenger safety remains its top priority and India continues to consult closely with regulators, airlines and aircraft manufacturers to ensure passenger safety. SpiceJet has around 12 Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes in its fleet while Jet Airways has 5 in the country. India joined the growing list of countries to have temporarily grounded the aircraft. Ethiopia, China, Australia, Malaysia, Singapore New Zealand and UK had earlier decided to suspend the aircraft. British Parliament has rejected Prime Minister Theresa May's European Union EU withdrawal deal by 149 votes for a second time. The House of Commons last night voted against the deal by 391 votes to 242. The result plunges the UK into a state of uncertainty just 2 weeks ahead of the country's exit from the EU. In her address to the parliament after the defeat, May said she is conscious of the potential damage leaving the EU without a deal would do and the lawmakers now face an unenviable choice of what to do next. MPs are now set to vote today on whether to leave the EU without a deal as promised by May, 16 days before the UK is scheduled to depart the bloc on 29th of March. UN Security Council UNSC is likely to take up today the issue of ban on Jaish e Mohammed or JEM chief Masood Azhar according to reports the resolution is expected to be taken by the 1267 committee of the UNSC India and other countries including France and the US have been pressing for a resolution to declare Pakistan based JEM chief as a global terrorist after the Pulwama terror attack owned by JEM The US, UK and France moved a proposal at the UNSC to designate Masood as a global terrorist. China, which has blocked three times such moves by India and other members of the UNSC, is yet to announce its stand on the issue. 
India slammed Pakistan for its support to terrorism and breaking up Kashmir issue and situation of minorities in the country at the 40th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council or UNHRC. First Secretary at India's permanent mission to UN, Mini Devi Kumam said this while exercising the right of reply during the 40th Human Rights Council session in Geneva yesterday. Kumam said despite its public commitment in January 2004 not to allow its soil or territory under its control for terrorism against India, Pakistan continues supporting terror attacks against India, the latest being the Pulwama terror attack. In cricket, the fifth and final ODI between India and Australia will be played at the Feroz Shah Kochla in Delhi today. The series decider clash is slated to begin at 1:30 p.m. Both the teams have won two matches each. MS Dhoni, whose absence from the team was felt in the fourth ODI, will sit out the Delhi ODI as well. Rishabh Pant, whose errors behind the stumps have been in the spotlight in the ongoing inquest into the Mohali defeat, is expected to be given another try. Defending champion India will kick off their campaign in the South Asian Football Federation SAF Women's Championship against Maldives in Biratnagar, Nepal today. The match will start at 2:45 in the afternoon. India remained unbeaten in the last four editions of the championship. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Tanvir Tanija. Thank you, Saira. In the run-up to Lok Sabha elections, all parties are bracing up vigorously to allure the voters. and this makes for top headlines across papers today congress kicks off campaign blitz on modi's home turf writes the hindustan times while the business standard writes modi says congress culture antithesis of gandhian thought the hindu business line headlines satta bazaar bets on 245 to 250 seats for bjp in lok sabha polls adding post air strike on pakistan prospects of modi's return to power look brighter the asian age quotes bsp supremo mayawati in its headline no alliance with congress in any state with the model code of conduct coming into effect the asian age informs government website drop pics of prime minister ministers After the deadly crash of Ethiopian Airlines aircraft, many countries banned flights of Boeing 737 MAX 8. The Financial Express headlines: 737 MAX 8 grounding spread across the globe. All papers have covered the Supreme Court's retake on the firecracker ban. The Hindu writes: "We cannot kill jobs in cracker industry." While the Hindustan Times notes: "Vehicles worse," says Supreme Court, in hearing on firecracker ban. To mark the centenary of the Jallianwala Bagh massacre, the Tribune carries an exclusive about the Partition Museum in Amritsar unfolding the story of Punjab as it was in 1919 through an exhibition and a specially crafted marigold made of khadi which will be available from March 13th to April 13th. And finally, in some bizarre news, the Hindu says flight returns after mother forgets baby. A Saudi Arabian Airlines flight had to make a last-minute turnaround because a passenger forgot her baby behind at the airport. And with that, it's back to you, Sara. Thank you, Zanvi. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Center justifies the law granting 10% quota for economically weaker section. BJP and Assam Gan Parishad decide to contest Lok Sabha polls together in Assam. Election Commission says decision on holding assembly, ele- assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir will be taken soon. DGCA grounds Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft with immediate effect following Ethiopian Airlines Boeing crash on Sunday. British Parliament rejects Brexit deal for a second time and in cricket India aim to clinch the five match series against Australia in a tournament decider ODI in Delhi today. And with that we end the morning news. Have a great day.